Hi guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to Beginners Makeup Week on this channel. Today we are on episode number two, and for today's video, I'm going to show you how to add dimension to your face, how to conceal, how to bronze, how to blush. and how to add highlighter how to pick the correct shades of your bronzer of your highlight and your blush and all of that and going to dive really into the techniques of each of those steps so i hope you guys enjoy and find it helpful and pick up lots of tips and tricks from this video if you're not already subscribed to my channel then please make sure that you do because i'm doing the beginner makeup series for the entire week this week and i'm going to be sharing a lot of beginner friendly tutorials and videos in this particular week so hit that subscribe button and And click on the bell right next to it so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. For now, you can keep on watching. All right, let's get started. Currently, I just have foundation and lipstick on my face. There's no other makeup product on my face. If you want to see how to get the perfect base and how to blend your foundation to perfection, you can watch the first episode of the Beginners Makeup series. I'm going to leave the link in the description section. But for today's video, we are focusing on how to conceal and define our face. So let's get started. Step number one is concealer. For concealer, I'm using the Wet n Wild Photo Focus. concealer so there are two purposes of using a concealer one is to just basically hide all the darkness and hyperpigmentation that you have going on the dark circles you have the hyperpigmentation you have around your mouth and the other is to highlight the high points of your face so if you want to just conceal uh, like you just want to hide all your blemishes and don't really want to add dimension to your face you should pick a concealer which is exactly the same shade of your foundation so that it nicely blends into your foundation and looks like skin and looks like an even surface i personally don't want to hide any particular blemishes i use very fully coverage foundation so since i don't want to hide any blemishes or hide any dark circles i just want to highlight the high points of my face and that basically means to like make your face look more defined and more snatched like just to highlight the middle section of your face that's the whole point of it and if that is your agenda then you should try to get a concealer which is one or two shades lighter than your foundation shade so just to give you all a comparison of the shade match this is the foundation that i have on my skin right now this is the pack of fluid hd foundation so i'm just going to give you a swatch right here of my foundation so this is my foundation number 4.5 in pack and now the concealer that i have chosen for today is the wet n wild concealer so my concealer is one shade lighter than my foundation and that is how you should pick a concealer if you want to highlight the high points of your face Okay so now that you know what the purpose of the concealer is and how to pick your correct shade for whatever purpose you want to use the concealer so let's dive into how to apply your concealer to highlight the high points of your face you will first start if you have a liquid concealer then with the wand of the concealer or if you have a pot concealer then you can use a brush or your finger to do the exact same steps So let's begin with our under eyes. Let's start with the inner corner of our eyes. We start with the inner corner and go towards the outside so that our eyes look more brighter from underneath and look more uplifted as compared to what they are looking now very really dark and dull. And the focus isn't really on my eyes. It's on the rest of my face which is looking much more clearer. So to grab focus on my eyes, I will highlight the underneath of my eyes. So you can start from the inner corner of your eye and go all the way outward drag a line down to your nose so if you've seen on instagram they make those huge inverted triangles i don't do too much of that because that can look very fake or uh, and then it looks like too much product so don't take too much product i just draw like this much of a line since this concealer is more medium coverage it's not too much of coverage so so much product is good enough if you have a very high coverage concealer just take little little product and then you can build up on it i always work with the principle that take little and then build up on that rather than taking too much product and then you can't hide from that you can't take that product and go anywhere if you take little little you can slowly build up on it and correct your mistakes as you go so the same thing i'm going to do on the other eye take it on the inner corner and down and out so you have these two lines going on right now the next area that you want to highlight is the bridge of your nose so for that just take something on the tip of your nose some product down the line you can leave the middle portion just like an exclamation mark on your nose 
and then on the forehead but just the central area of your forehead so I've drawn three lines here now around my mouth I want to cancel hyperpigmentation but at the same time not attract too much attention to my mouth so I will highlight my cupid's bow so highlighting the cupid's bow and making a cross on my chin So this way I will be able to blend out the concealer, hide my hyperpigmentation but also not grab too much attention to my lips. The next and last area that I want to use my concealer on is near my cheekbones. Now the cheekbone area you want to really define it to get that carved out look that you see on Instagram and you know to make your cheeks look very thin and perfect and sculpted. For that you should go like below your ear lobe over here just with the concealer to carve the cheekbone out so leave the upper section of your cheekbone let that be take your ear lobe as a mark and from your ear lobe just go a little downwards all right so you do the same thing on the other side from your ear lobe you go downward so this is what your face should look like now when you're done with this you want to quickly blend because otherwise your concealer will set in place and then it will become very difficult to blend. My favorite tool to blend is of course a beauty sponge. If you don't like using a beauty sponge, go in with your finger, go in with a brush, go in with whatever you're comfortable. Okay so here's my beauty sponge, I'm going to take the cleaner side and start blending. Again like I said in the foundation video, just go in dapping motions. If you pull and tug underneath your eyes, you're going to face wrinkles when you like age and with maturity you're going to start having fine lines and wrinkles so make sure you're bouncing your beauty sponge and not really pulling and tugging especially underneath the eyes because that area of your skin is very sensitive keep on bouncing till you feel the product as blended in and you can see the difference instantly how much more brighter and full of life this under eye looks as compared to this or which is very dark and like pulled down and dragged down so that is the whole point of when I say you're trying to highlight the midpoints of your face with the help of a lighter concealer than your foundation keep on dabbing your sponge in the same area and you will eventually get the blend of the concealer the most problematic area to blend is near your nose in those creases so just do this and dab your sponge over there all right so i'm gonna my lips and let's blend this in place third portion the bridge of our nose and just have to dab on the nose as well if you do this this and this and like just try to take product from the top and bring it down you're just going to end up with a slippy slidey mess you want to press the product into your skin so that it wears longer throughout the day because mostly foundation starts and concealer starts wearing off from your nose right in the beginning and you should also not forget that you have foundation down so if you're going to slip and slide your foundation is going to move along with the concealer so just bounce all the product into your skin this one technique is really going to be like the game changer that you will see in your makeup routine so for the last area you just have to go in that same particular area below your ear lobe and just blend downwards don't take the concealer above just downwards whenever you're blending if you feel the thing is blended if you can't see the harsh lines anymore still keep blending like if you feel you're blended, blend a little more. So you know that is what gives you that flawless base, that flawless look comes with that extra effort you put into blending. Blending can really be like a hand workout because uh, it takes a lot of effort and what you see in the videos is just a fast forwarded version but in real life it takes a lot of time to keep on blending it into your skin. So whenever you feel in the mirror that okay my product is blended blend a little more and then you will see it flawless in all the photographs you take and on camera and everything okay now i feel like i have blended my concealer to perfection so i want to set it in place i need to powder this in place so that it stops from creasing for powder today i'm using the laura mercier translucent setting powder i've shown this step in the foundation video as well so i'm just going to quickly breeze through this all i do is take a little bit of powder on this sponge itself and then place it underneath my eyes wherever i've applied concealer basically on the bridge of my nose around my mouth 
So with this, my concealer is going to not crease up and it's going to set in place and I'm not applying it all over my face so that I still have a little bit of glow from my foundation on the rest of my face. And these areas will be nicely set, matte and bright. So I don't like to keep my powder on for very long otherwise the eyes can become very dry. So after I quickly dab some powder like this with a sponge, I take a loose brush like this. This is the e.l.f. powder brush. Just a loose fluffy brush and just dust the powder away and whatever you dust from here you can take on the rest of your face. So dusting all the excess powder, you can see how matte this got, like all the shine is gone, the creasing is gone. So it's gonna wear a lot longer because now it's set and fixed with powder and it's also so much more bright so it attracts a lot of attention to my eyes. Do the same thing on the other side, flick the powder away from your forehead, from your nose, around your mouth and in this area just do this, just do this motion jhadu on the cheekbones. Keep below your earlobe, over here we have other products that are going to come so you don't want to pile up too much product in this region so that's why I'm like emphasizing that you stay below your earlobe. Alright, so we are done with concealer and setting the concealer in place. Let's dive into step number 3 and that is now to add some bronzer and some warmth to our face. Right now our face looks very white and like matte and in one dimension. So we want to add some more dimension to it. For that I'm going to teach you how to bronze. So the purpose of a bronzer personally for me is not just to add warmth but also dimension to my cheekbones, to my nose, to my forehead to look a little smaller. So all of that and we are going to attack those areas first. So while selecting the shade of your bronzer, you need to know your undertone to be able to select your right bronzer. So look at the wrist veins on your hand. If your wrist veins look green to you, that means you have a warm undertone. If your wrist veins look blue to you, that means you have a cool undertone. And if your wrist veins look both blue and green, that means you have a neutral undertone. So if you have a neutral undertone, you can go in for any bronzer. You can go in for warm or cool tone. If you have green veins and your warm undertone like me, then you need a warm toned bronzer like something like this you know like you can see how warm and very sunshiny this is like it's like a melted chocolate sunset warm finish and if your undertone is cool you need something grey it's more grey undertone more ashy looking so that is the bronzer you would select if you have a cooler undertone if you are warm undertone so this is the bronzer I'm currently using. This is the Ofra blusher and bronzer and there is no shade number to it. So now we know how to pick your correct bronzer out. So let's learn how to apply the bronzer. Once again for bronzer, I'm going to use a brush. You can use a sponge, you can use your hand. I'm not going to continue to say that. Just use whatever you have. I prefer a brush which has a little bit of angulation going on. So like with this angle, I'll be able to pick up product. So that's what I do, I pick up product on the higher part of the angle, I dust off the excess, you have to always do that, you don't need too much product on your face. And now starting with my cheekbones, to carve out my cheekbones, wherever we laid our concealer, you just want to go one line above that. So if you laid your concealer like at the lower section of your earlobe, just go a little above, your, like where your, this portion of your earlobe is, just go there and place it. Place the bronzer first and then blend. For blend, don't put too much pressure. Just go in like oval motions. I'm going like ovular motions, not circular. Otherwise, you'll end up taking product too much upper. Go in like bigger ovals. This is how your hand should go. So you're going back and forth, back and forth, blending it into place. And you can see you've added so much warmth, so much more definition to your cheekbone as compared to this cheekbone which has no product on and if you have like really plumpy cheeks then your contour or your bronzer will really help define your cheeks away from your jawbone. Okay so we've added warmth and dimension to our cheeks let's dive into the next area that is your jawline. To define your jawline you just have to go across this entire jawline with this bronzer. So take the product, go from your ears down. So just graze it across, graze the product across your jaw, down your chin, 
on the chin like on your jaw bone you're literally grazing the brush on your jaw bone this helps with the appearance of your double chin so you can add product till you feel like there is definition to your face so it gives you that shadow appearance and makes your double chin like you just graze the product a little downwards as well and mimics like you don't have a double chin going on okay so the next area we're going to attack is the forehead which is like a very very important area to me because i have a very large forehead so uh, i like to like really bronze my forehead so that it appears a little smaller uh, so it's just like playing with the shadow concept so if i add a little bronzer here and warm this area up it will create the illusion that i have a smaller forehead as compared to the large forehead that i have so for that i'm just taking product on my brush dusting off the excess and i'm just holding my hair back and from my hairline i'm grazing across my hairline to blend some product into it and taking a little down as well once again like i said before if you feel you've blended enough blend a little more go in circular motions go grazing across your forehead just keep blending Okay so one of the last areas that is now quite the hype in bronzing is a nose contour is to like snatch your nose so that your nose looks thinner i personally don't do that because i have a very straight and thin nose so if i do that it looks like even like thinner and more funny so for that you take a like a smaller brush if you don't have that you can use your pinky finger so i'll show you both ways with the pinky as well as the brush so i'm taking a little bit of product on this small brush small buffing eyeshadow brush there's no specific brush needed for this and all you have to do is like the two parallel lines you have on your nose if your nose is really like wide and your those two parallel lines are really far away from each other go a little inside those parallel lines so once again you're creating that illusion that you have a slimmer nose and if your parallel lines are close by you, it's not so far all you have to do is define them go just along those lines so you go all the way from like the inner portion of your eye like this part of your eye downwards and flick it down okay so since we had added concealer on the bridge of our nose and we we'll put a little bit of bronzer on the sides of this area so then that illusion will be there that this is bright and those are like shadows and it will look slimmer you get the whole concept Okay so now that this side is done I'm going to show this side with my pinky finger in case you don't have a small brush so just take a little bit of product on your pinky finger just have to put this in controlled manner just dab 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 okay now I've product on my nose I'm going to blend too much product I'm going to wipe the rest on my pajama no product now blend just like you're going in with the brush keep buffing 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 dab 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 buff buff blend buff buff blend go inward and go like a little on this area just to highlight the globe and then with highlighter we'll highlight this portion so it look really really snatched or if anywhere you feel you have harsh lines or anything that you too much product ho gaya bahut galti ho gayi just take your sponge and go in and just like dab things into place the sponge has this unique technique of just picking up any excess product so jahan bhi galti ho gayi hogi it will just correct it for you all right so this is bronzer all complete uh, now let's dive on to step number 4 i think we are on and that is to blush up our cheeks to add the little bit of color for blush you can literally select any color of blush as for your natural blush color or just whatever you're wearing so not since i'm wearing a yellow top which is super bright i don't want a pink blush otherwise it look too much in contrast with my yellow top so i'm going to use something more peachy more on the neutral side so, so i'm using the wet n wild color icon blush this is in the shade mellow wine selecting a color product like blush you just have to keep in mind which lipstick you're using what outfit you're wearing uh, and all of that when you're selecting your blush so if you're going for a white or a lighter color outfit then you can go in for nice dark pink cheeks or like rosy cheeks which really attract attention because your outfit is nice and dull but if my outfit is so bright like yellow or like 
purple or green or something you know very out there so you can like really tone down the blush and not attract so much attention to your makeup now for using blush of course mine is broken a lot of my makeup is broken we can keep tabs of that later uh, but just take a stippling brush now for blush again you can take any brush you have or just use a sponge if you are comfortable doing that a sponge is very versatile I'm using a stipple brush which is something like this this is the elf stippling brush just take product over here and dab off the excess please do that otherwise you're going to end up with clown cheeks all at once okay once you've dabbed off the excess now the area that you want to apply blush don't go ahead and smile really high and then just apply on the apples of your cheek because then when you stop smiling it look like you have two circles on the apples of your cheek you don't want that so just where you've applied your bronzer on your cheeks you know where your cheeks are right so this is like the plump area of your cheeks just apply there dab it over there and then flick it above from there so just in the area where your actual cheek is at the high points of your cheekbones and above the bronzer definitely where above the bronzer that's why i said that don't apply too much product here because now your blush and your highlight are going to take space there so just on the apples of your cheek and flick it up so when you smile that natural glow is automatically there definitely concentrate more product on the apples of your cheeks and just flick the excess away okay so this side is nice and blushed up so let's go in for this side as well really be generous with your blush like see how what kind of a blush you have like if it's a buildable bl blush a buildable blush then you can like slowly slowly build up product if it's a very out there blush then ek chhatke mein you'll have too much color i like a little like extra color on my cheeks because then throughout the day it fades away so this is blush all complete let's dive into the last step i think it's step number 5 or 6 and that is to highlight your face this is my favorite step as is for a lot of girls it adds the glow that is missing on your face right now face is looking super matte and because my blush has a little bit of glow to it a satin finish to it it has a little glow but really for that blinding highlight where you can really blind your haters with that that for that you need a proper proper highlighter the highlighter i'm using today is the maybelline master chrome highlight in the shade molten gold so once again when you're selecting highlighter uh, it goes according to your undertone so if you're warmer undertone you have to select something which is more golden so it blends into your skin and makeup and really feels like it's like a highlight from within if you want a very stark out there highlight there are so many newer highlighters which have a blue and a pink and all of that going on so you can go for that uh, there's no harm in doing that but if you're going for a natural look then a warmer undertone should select a golden undertone highlight like this uh, and if you're a cooler undertone you should go for something more whitish more pearly more champagne champagne is something that can suit both depending on how much gold how much white it has so yeah select your highlighter shade as for your undertone again uh, i'm a warmer undertone so i prefer golder highlights it looks more natural on my skin all right once again for highlight use the tool which you are comfortable with i will show you both with a brush as well as my finger so taking some product on the brush tap off the excess always and you have to go on the cheekbone itself just the cheekbone you can feel your cheekbone right here so that is the highest point of your face this brow bone and this cheekbone you want to create a v this inverted v is what you want to create so you go one swipe like this one swipe like this you're creating a v an arrow on your face just feel like that and that's how your hand will start moving flick on your cheekbone flick on your brow bone flick on your cheekbone flick on your brow bone and there you have it a lot of glow add it to the high point of your face let's do the same thing on the opposite side with your finger this time so you're going to go on the cheekbone and then go on the brow bone and with the finger too much product is added because you can't dab off excess so just tap off the excess from your face with another finger which has no product on it all right so this is the glow added and the next place you want to go is on your nose so just go on the tip of your nose and then go down the bridge in an exclamation mark so that's what you want one line and one dot all right then with another finger just dab off the excess and then you want to go on your cupid's bow just to highlight your lips hoo 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 ta 
All right, so this is your highlight all complete. Okay, so this is our full face of makeup with added dimension all complete. We want to set this in place. So we'll use a setting spray. I'm using the Revolution Pro Fix Illuminating Setting Spray. And the last and final step after this is to pick up any excess product with a sponge. A sponge is a very integral part of your makeup kit. If you have a sponge and you have your hands, you can do all the magic you need on your face. Like more than brushes, I really advocate a good sponge. This sponge is by Plume & Co. It's an Indian company. It's available on Amazon as well as on their own website. So you can check it out. They have amazing, soft, very, very, very nice sponges at very affordable rates. So after you're done spritzing your face, you want to go with your sponge and like go all the way on your face but bouncing. Don't drag at this point after all your makeup is done. Don't ruin it. Just dab, 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 dab. And when you do this, any excess product, any excess blush you have going on, any excess highlight, any excess bronzer, powder is going to get picked up on your uh, sponge and you will have a very flawless natural base with all the products just melted into your skin alright you guys so with that we complete our episode number two of beginners makeup week on how to shape and define that dimension to your face i hope you guys enjoyed and took a lot of tips and tricks from this video if you did actually find this video informative and helpful then please don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel because, because i'm continuing with these beginner videos for the rest of the week so i'm going to be putting out content every day for the rest of the week so please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon right next to it so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. I will see you guys tomorrow with a new video for the beginners makeup series. Until then stay home, stay safe and stay positive. Bye guys, love you all.